Mrs. Stearman, what time did you get this voicemail from your daughter? Shannon left it at 8.15. I called her when my shift ended, but she didn't pick up, so I came over. I've been waiting for her ever since. And she sounded pretty upset. Any idea why? Foster care, abused by my ex, me battling my demons. You heard the message? I wasn't there for her. Tell me about her friends. Was she in contact with her biological parents? When I adopted her, I was told they passed. As for friends, I wouldn't know. I've been trying to reconnect, but it's been hard. I hope to God you can find her. Playing the violin. <laughs> I don't get it. All I know for sure is that music saved her life. I'm gonna send you a barcode from a lottery ticket. See if you can find out where it was sold. But kids are wired different than you. They're yours, but they're not you. No matter how much you love them, you never fully understand them. So on um, the street side of the curtains are sun bleached and the alarm set for 7 p.m. So I think she worked nights somewhere in Lakeview. Do you have any idea where she worked? Like I said, we've been estranged. How do you know the job was in Lakeview? Powerball. All right, so she bought lottery tickets here between 5 and 7, presumably after work. Maybe the owner knows where she works. You think Sydney's wired differently? Differently than what? Than us. Well, Keith not remembering the car was definitely a surprise. The car is just an example, okay? She just, she can't accept it. I'm, I'm not wired that way. <laughs> All right, here we go. Mike ran Shannon's financial, so apparently there's no payroll or W-2 records, but between five and seven, it seems that she also makes a weekly cash deposit of $400 at an ATM across the street. $400, that's a rent check and a bagel. No cream cheese. Yeah, no wonder she plays a lottery. All right, the lottery is aspirational. So right. she's aspiring to... Well, you know she wants to be a musician. We're detectives Batista and Grant. Are you the one in charge of this place? That's right, uh, Walter Pierce. Hi, hey, Walter. Uh, do you know Shannon Stearman? Of course, she works here. Uh, Cleans the place uh, in exchange for free studio time. Is something wrong? Is she okay? When's the last time you saw her? The night before last. Did you notice anything unusual? We made plans! You made promises! What's going on in there? You ruined my life. I don't think I won't ruin yours. Can you just come down to me? No idea who he is. Never saw him before or since. Did she tell you anything about him? Not a word. She freaked out, ran off, left this behind. All right, we need to look at your security footage. Don't have any. People who come here like their privacy. And then we're gonna need that recording. What's that gonna do? I hate to break it to you, but you're not the only one with unusual resources. Hey, I just sent you an audio file. We're looking for a name on the male voice. Yeah, 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 hold. Um, okay, so Betty works for a software company that develops speech recognition algorithms for all of your favorite digital assistants. They also have a massive database of voice samples that we can run our suspect against because voice matches are nearly as dependable as fingerprints these days. Okay. All right, uh, voice matches a Rory stance. He has a white collar sheet, uh, nothing recently. It looks like he, he'd gotten his life together. Okay, let's pick him up. See what he has to say about Shannon. It won't be much. Stance was killed the night before last, about an hour after they fought. What? Hey, MPU? Okay, so they got in an argument. He's dead and now she's missing. That can't be a coincidence. Call Homicide, get what they have on stands, and then see if she meets their suspect profile. Yep. Thank you. You know, in her bedroom, she left her wallet and her cell phone, why run without those things? Um, she didn't run, and if the hit off the alert I just got is accurate, she's definitely not in hiding. 